Hello, this is Tony Hiller from RealClimateScience.com. The Climate Guy setting the record straight about climate. In this video, I'll show you an example of how climate scientists change their story and cherry pick their data in order to obtain funding. In 1973, George Kukla and the National Science Foundation were forecasting a new ice age. They cited increased Arctic ice and snow since the 1930s as evidence of the global cooling. Snowbanks cover areas of Baffin Island today, which were seasonally snow-free 30 or 40 years before the present cooling. Pack ice around Iceland is once again becoming the serious hindrance to navigation it was during the Little Ice Age of the 17th and 18th centuries. Note that there's no mention of the Antarctic in the 1973 report. The only thing they discuss is Arctic ice and snow. Now let's fast forward to 1981, eight years later, when the same George Kukla and the same National Science Foundation were pushing global warming instead of global cooling. In the 1981 report, they ignored the Arctic and only reported on the Antarctic, the exact opposite of what they did in 1973. Let's look at why they did that. The researchers reported to the National Science Foundation, which financed the studies, that pack ice fringing Antarctica was greater in the 1930s than in the 1970s. This is, of course, the exact opposite of what they said in the 1973 report, except they were talking about the Arctic instead of the Antarctic. The 1990 IPCC report shows us exactly what George Kukla and the National Science Foundation were up to. From 1973 to 1981, Arctic sea ice increased quite a bit. This wrecked their global warming story, so they ignored it. And instead, they focused on Antarctic ice, which decreased during that same period. Notice that Arctic ice and Antarctic ice move opposite each other. When Arctic ice is increasing, Antarctic ice is decreasing, and vice versa. And the exact same cherry picking is still going on today. Climate scientists now only talk about the Arctic and they ignore the Antarctic because Antarctic ice has been increasing for the last 35 years and was at a record high in 2015. But let's take a closer look at this graph. Note that since 2015 there's been a sharp drop in Antarctic sea ice extent. It may be starting to reverse. And if we go back 10 years, there may even be starting a downward trend from 10 years ago. And at the opposite pole, we're starting to see Arctic ice increase over the last 10 years. This, of course, isn't being reported in the press, but since 2007, the Arctic ice minimum extent has been increasing quite a bit. So once again, we may be seeing a shift where Antarctic ice is starting to decrease and Arctic ice is starting to increase, similar to the period from 1973 to 1981. Climate is cyclical and swings back and forth. The Arctic goes one way and the Antarctic goes the other way, and then they reverse and switch opposite directions. But the one thing that's constant is the way climate scientists behave. They will cherry pick whichever poll and whichever data is necessary to obtain funding in the current political climate. This is a graph of temperatures in Reykjavik, the capital of Iceland. In the 1940s, the Arctic was very warm and scientists were pushing global warming. By 1974, the Arctic had cooled down quite a bit in one of its regular cycles, and scientists were pushing global cooling instead of global warming. And then the Arctic warmed up again, and by 2007, it was just as warm as it was in the 1940s, and scientists were once again pushing global warming. But this graph also shows us something very interesting about the behavior of climate scientists. Note that the minimum temperature occurred in 1979 in the Arctic, and it's been warming ever since. 1979 is a special date because it was very cold in the Arctic, and that was when Arctic sea ice reached its maximum extent. Remember from the 1990 IPCC report, there was a large increase in Arctic sea ice from the early 1970s to 1979 when it had this huge spike. And also note that the data in this study going back to the early 1970s is from NOAA. Well, this is the current NOAA and Arctic sea ice graph, and note that it starts in 1979, right at the peak in ice and the minimum of temperature. Why did they leave off the data from the early 1970s, which was in the 1990 IPCC report? 
Well, that's easy. Noah wanted to show a linear downwards trend, which they could attribute to carbon dioxide. Had they included the 1970s data, which showed an increase, that ruins their linear trend, and it ruins their global warming story. Then Arctic behavior becomes cyclical instead of linear. Also note that Arctic sea ice has generally been increasing since 2007. This also wrecks their linear downwards trend. This line is fake. But as is always the case, this story gets much worse. This 1979 cherry pick is much worse than I've indicated so far. If we include data from the 1985 Department of Energy Global Warming Report, we can see that they actually cherry picked the high point of the last century. There was a lot less Arctic ice in the 1940s and 1950s than there was in the 1970s and 1980s. This, of course, wrecks the global warming story, so they ignore all the data prior to 1979. And you might remember that the winters of 1977, 1978, and 1979 were the coldest in U.S. history, and they were in the Arctic too. So, of course, there was a lot of sea ice in 1979. As I've shown in this video, climate scientists will cherry pick their time frames and cherry pick their locations as necessary to obtain funding. These so-called climate scientists are not doing science. What they're doing is they're seeking funding, and they will say whatever is necessary to obtain it. The actual data does not support global warming theory, but scientists twist, cherry pick, and manipulate it in order to force fit a theory which doesn't actually work. The great American physicist Richard Feynman famously said, It doesn't matter how beautiful your theory is. It doesn't matter how smart you are. If it doesn't agree with the experiment, it's wrong. Global warming is by far the biggest and best funded scam in science history. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science for a long time.